Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In Apostle Joshua Selman's enlightening message, Accessing the Power of Light, we discover how light transforms our lives. The Word of God illuminates our path, dispelling darkness. Embrace the light of Christ, which empowers and guides us. With divine light, obstacles are overcome and freedom is achieved. Worship magnifies the light within, drawing us closer to God's presence. Access the power of light and walk in divine illumination. When and even till today terrorists use this strategy to attack people, they will send fear and say we are coming. We are coming and by the time the people absorb the fear, they become incapacitated before the attack. They will never come until they inflict fear. That was what Goliath was doing. Goliath knew that he would not win an army until he did something to their minds. History is full of people, dictators, who have lived and died. They knew this as a formula for victory. That if I can penetrate your mind and plant a picture and enthrone that picture to be higher than anything, even without an attack, you will die. When David came, Goliath, do you notice that the first way Goliath started attacking David was through words. As soon as he came, because he would speak to the armies and say, no, these guys are already defeated. The king was afraid. Here was a teenager who stood. And when they began to speak, Goliath said, no, this guy does not sound like the army. Am I a dog that you are coming with me to, with this? And he said, well, that's not the issue. Goliath, you come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in a name. While you did not see me, I was not just in the wilderness. There was a mindset. He told Saul, he said, listen, Saul said, How are you, what, what credentials do you have to allow you to go and fight Goliath? He said, sir, with all due respect, one day I was in the wilderness and a lion came. I chased that lion with my bare hands. I chased the bear with my bare hands. I tore it. There was no social media to post it, but it did not mean the mentality of victory was not in me. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? It was not his mouth that was speaking. His most dominant thoughts. You know the dominant thought, the knowledge of God. He says, I come to you in a name. The revelation of the name and the victory that it holds was greater than the sight of swords and spears. And he said, Goliath, by that name, because David knew, he said, by you I will run through a troop, and by my God I will leap over a wall. He knew that a body without a spirit is dead. That Goliath was empowered by demon evil spirit. That Goliath was not just a beast. Goliath stood representing wizardry. And that there was a force if you dislodge, no matter how large the body is, it will come down. He had a mentality. Jesus did not just defeat Satan because of, no, he knew. You know why Jesus was silent? Because he was talking anyhow that transferred dominion. When he met Adam, Adam blamed the Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Serpent did not blame anybody. And so dominion went to him. So when Jesus came, he was silent, even when he had something to say. Listen, please listen to me. Poverty has a mindset if it does not find, it cannot manifest. Wealth has a mindset if it does not find, it cannot manifest. Causes have a mindset if they don't find, they cannot manifest. Blessings have a mindset if they don't find, they cannot manifest. 
God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12. Abraham did not have the mindset to make that happen. God had to prime him by using the stars and say, count it, he kept failing. He said, so shall thy seed be. Finally, Abraham believed God. That reality became greater than barrenness. And the Bible says it was credited like a transfer. So that transfer could not happen. You know how you make transfer from your account and it says he cannot. It was credited to him as righteousness. The anointing has a mindset for it to flow. You cannot be a defeated person and you want to liberate others. By what thinking? No matter how much gallon of oil is poured on you, your mindset would deflate the potential. Was it not the size of the vessel that controlled the oil? The oil was never small. It was put in a small jar, so it looked small. What was the prophet's recommendation? Expand the jar. Expand the jar. Thoughts, belief systems have an energy, have an energy, have an energy. Let me tell you this. Now, I'm not encouraging you to practice this, but I just want to encourage you. Do you know there are a group of people from the secular called hustlers? You know who an, a hustler is by the world's definition? Somebody that does not rest. When one door closes, he doesn't have time to cry. He will force another one. Most of those people eventually succeed from the world's way. You know why? Because they have seen victory and there is no pain in between that stops them. The person loses a job by the next day, he's roaming around Abuja. There's no time for sympathy. Except demons attack them, if not, they will win. This was the mentality that Nimrod had in Genesis 11. No Holy Spirit, no demon, but men who had already built in their mind. Give us Genesis 11, 4 and 5. I show you how great companies have been built in our world. I show you how God by his majesty built this ministry. I show you how your life will be built. It will not be built by luck. Victory will not manifest by wishes and sentiments. Nimrod said, let us build. They've not started. Let us build a city and a tower. Look at his description. Whose top may reach the heavens. Now there are various kinds and various levels of heavens. So he's not just talking of heaven where God dwells. Are we together? I don't have time to tell you that there is a portion of heaven that no man has been there. Nobody. Nobody. No mortal man who was once on earth is there now. No. There is a portion. Heaven is not just a large room that you can enter anyhow just with the throne room. No. No. There are many heavens. There's atmospheric heaven. There is the realm of the spirit. There are other galaxies and planets. I hope you know God created them and there are things there beyond science. Let me just leave that one there. Let's not go into those discussions. But just know it for a fact that we are not alone. There are regions beyond the sight of men. There are regions beyond the sight of science. This earth you see is suspended with a foundation that is invisible. Geography says it's floating. The book of Job said it had cornerstones. It was built with a foundation. There is a part of earth that is visible. That's the part we see. But there is a part that is mysteriously invisible. This is what makes God, God. We can stretch our knowledge. The Bible said there is no searching of his understanding. So there are certain portions where people have gone to. It's the reason why when you base your Christian experience on just visions and extra biblical encounters, you may be sincere, but you will mislead a lot of people. Three of us can go to heaven and go to different regions of heaven. We return with our encounters and we may document things that may end up misleading the saints. It is the reason why the believer's point of focus must be scripture. I've had many encounters, but none of those encounters become a basis for doctrine. Are we together now? I say this because particularly if you are called into the prophetic ministry, you have to be careful. The strength of your encounters, just because the angel that appeared, how many of them do you know? An angel can appear to you genuinely. Once you are not on earth, you call the name of where you are heaven. You may be wrong. There are many, many regions. Many regions. 
are we together many regions the bible says so i don't want to go into all of those but there are many regions even when you are out of the earth there are dimensions in the spirit there are many things here now but the dimension we are in now cannot allow us see them like angels you have to be open to that dimension to see but they see what you are seeing are we together there are dimensions where you don't need gravity there are dimensions where you don't need memory there are dimensions where you don't need to speak to communicate it is another agency that is for communication so it's important we manage encounters with wisdom i'm just digressing in a minute to say that so that the strength of your experience does not just become your supernatural encounters i've done a teaching on that you can get it if not you're going to get into a lot of trouble if i run this ministry based on the encounters that i've seen there will be many practices that may seem to work for a while but it will deviate people from god so regardless your encounters you bring them to line up with scripture and some of them are personal encounters there are things god has told me that applies to only me and my work with him if i create a doctrine out of it it will destroy people they will not be able to become are we together Jesus made a statement in John 14, 30. Let's read. I want to show you something now. John 14, verse 30. Please, I'd like you to shout it as loud as you can. <laughs> Ready? One to read. Uh-huh. Read the B part again. For the prince, one to go. What exactly is Jesus saying? For the prince of this world cometh and had nothing in me. So the prince of this world is attracted by something that looks like him in me. And the reason why he came to Jesus but, but that mission was fruitless was because there was no parallel of anything evil that Satan could relate with. Are we together now? When victory comes, it comes to look for victory that is inside you by the word. And if there is no victory within you by scripture, it cannot manifest. When causes come, when they come and they find out that you have been fortified through knowledge, is the reason why we don't just minister deliverance, we teach people how to come into victory. Because if all there is is casting out the demons, and you leave the people like that you will keep casting out demons forever but when you cast out the demons then the second level is deliverance through transformation you are helping them now understand so that when satan will come your enlightenment does not stop him from coming there is no spiritual exercise greater than jesus's prayer and fasting for 40 days he being the word but the first person he saw after that elaborate exercise is satan the defeat is not in Satan's coming. The defeat is that something within you gives him an edge over you. A thinking. There is an energy. Are we together now? Yes. Listen to something I wrote here. I said victory depends on a belief system. Defeat depends on a belief system being victimized by curses and yokes is mentally dependent not just spiritually dependent not just demonic increase and prosperity depends on a belief system manifesting excellence and leadership depends on a belief system walking in the anointing depends on a belief system you can be saved and still be a victim of limitations and frustrations you can be saved yes sir you can be genuinely saved and still be a victim of limitations and frustrations that plagued you before you got saved that means those things were there and even after you got saved, they did not recognize it. The oppression still remained. 
and yet you are genuinely born again is why many believers doubt their salvation once you believe in the name of the Lord genuinely with your heart you are saved but because you do not understand the journey beyond salvation you see that now that there is a journey beyond salvation in addition to your being saved the journey the way now then the truth then life you will find out that at a point you say look I'm just going I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm a child of God I don't my, this my salvation is not authentic it is but it is that the knowledge of God has not been exalted in your mind above every other knowledge are we together do you know why you come to church every week it is that project called transformation what you are receiving now there is an ascendance there is a warfare happening in your mind that's the reason why sometimes you hear some things and you're like ah this thing is hard should I believe should I not believe other mindsets that are there when you see people respect them and honor them carry a gift and go and give your boss and your superior whether you like them or not and say thank you for the privilege of working here your pride and your ego which has been a mindset that kept you will find that belief is all not profitable why should I do that to somebody younger than me uh-huh that belief system but by the time you keep hearing and hearing you see what is happening one day the Spirit of God who is aiding that transformation process brings you to a point where that exaltation happens let me tell you there is an energy there is a force that begins to emanate from you that force is what draws bad friends to people or draws good friends that force is what draws gifted people to ministries there are ministries that will never lack gifted people it is a grace but the grace comes through a mindset there is an above only mindset are we together now the Bible is a compendium of mindsets giving you a chance to choose the one you will use with the wisdom of an architect to design your life you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth these blessings will come upon you is a mindset when men say there is a casting down they are not verses they are mindsets you can buy them with humility and place them and begin to ward the limiting mindsets oh i think i i i don't believe god blesses people uh, prosperity is unnecessary it's a mindset why is it unnecessary it's a mindset it leads people away from god you see that it's a mindset but the owner, the holiest person of all owns the earth and owns everything. And yet he did not backslide by owning the earth. The cattle on a thousand hill belongs to him. And yet his holiness did not diminish with the presence of these things. So where did you get the mindset that increase and abundance just diminishes you? No, it reflects something that is already within you. You don't need to have money to not be serious with God. Are you seeing that now? It's a mindset. Oh, increase does not matter. It doesn't matter whether crowds of people come. It does not. It's a mindset. When you know that salvation is for all men, salvation is a business of numbers. Numbers matter when you're talking about salvation. But that does not mean if there are not many people, you are not doing well. But salvation is a business of numbers. So you would see men like our Father in the Lord that the Jew. He would say plant churches around let there be so willing and in his at his age he's still going around holding light up campaigns i've had the honor of preaching in one i think at least one of them and in my mind i'm thinking i'm a young man but what is such an old man doing it's a mindset one day i remember telling them one of his people and say please tell daddy to rest and he said don't waste your time he will not rest he said we'll rest when we go here when we go out of this world it's a mindset Another lazy young man has an arrival mentality with one million naira. It's a mindset. Another arrogant preacher with nothing is a mindset. Joshua Selman, arrogant at this level, but there's somebody who never arrives. Arrival is a mindset. The passion to continue is a mindset. And all of this mindset exert energy. Let me tell you, you are being affected by my mindset. If I plant two, you will be surprised that the little you have done, you will become comfortable. When you see champions continue, it swallows up what you are doing and you go back and say, my God, if this person can do like this, it's a mindset. 
when you see anointed people still praying and fasting and studying the word it's a mindset that there are still more lands to conquer are we together now yes please believers hear me if this sermon does not affect you then forget about liberty demons used to oppress me as a preacher i've told you my story not as a believer as a preacher i was already anointed i would go for programs and great miracles will happen and return back and lie down and here comes the spirits to my room i said what is all this nonsense how can i be ministering in the power of god and then i return back and they're oppressing me because they have no respect for whether you are called pastor whether you are called prophet once they find something that attracts them they will come and they will not just come they will prevail satan cometh to me poverty cometh to me prosperity cometh to me so all the realities that you need and hate in life you are like in a permit me to use the word a, a swimming pool that is full of everything poverty is flowing around you wealth is flowing around you increase is flowing around you but the one that comes to you is the one that finds a component within you that draws it to you this is the concept of what we know to be familiar spirits. You know why they are familiar? They want certain occurrences to remain in certain lives, in certain territories. So they study the mindset that attracts that trouble and they create a stronghold around it so that everybody from that family thinks that way. Grandfather transfers it to father. So the evil continues. If a child stands up and says, I'm breaking it, you don't break it by saying, I rebuke it alone. You rebuke it, but you start re-engineering your thinking. Another kind of energy is now sent to your village not me not me and the curses will come but they will not meet someone of that kind of bloodline again because something has been altered are we together here yeah, I wrote something here pastors and ministers with all due respect must realize the sensitivity of the roles that they play in literally determining the destinies of people and by extension the destiny of a nation i think it was last year or so i was in the u.s and one of the things i was studying was what made the u.s the u.s at least in its state of glory that we know i didn't just want to celebrate because i believe that i have a contribution to helping Nigeria, helping Africa to become a reflection of the glory of God. And it will not just happen by preaching verses. There was a mindset. Last I traveled to the US, I had the opportunity to travel and pray where America started. And I had the opportunity to visit the monument of the forefathers. And I saw a few things that were written there. The tenants that were the foundations of America, I said, this is it. This is it. No nation. Please listen to my message, how nations are built. It was an Independence Day message. How nations are built. Their policies. Policies are products of mindsets translated into law. Are we together? If you believe in equality, you believe in excellence. It's a mindset. You will simply articulate it and write it. It becomes part of your constitution. So if Africa is the way we are, the, the problem is not just the troubles that we have around. We have to go back and re-examine the frame, the foundation upon what? Listen, you must have the courage to probe your belief systems. How did we get here? Who believed what that made this kind of nonsense? Are we together? It's important. The difference between a great ministry and a limiting struggling ministry is not just the will of God, it's the belief system of the leaders. What mindset 
listen ladies and gentlemen you did not just come here just by your will i tell you i hate to be the one to say this but there is an energy that is exerted from transformation and because it is god's principle he will weigh you and he will bring men that reflect your growth and transformation at this level of growth it will be stupid for me to believe that god will trust me with the kind of daddy Geo's influence that god will trust me with the kind of reach of say the rccg globally one day we will get there but the truth is that we are not yet there there is something they know the very fact that we have not learned the secret of their humility is a sign that there's something we don't know because there are certain heights when you get to you will now be transformed to see the value of humility are we together my question now is what is in you help those under the anointing what is in you that has been exalted above the knowledge of god that gives satan access when i found this key my life changed look at me i can give you 10 million naira now if the level of financial transformation you have in your mind is 1 million an energy will come through your mindset and take away 9 million mysteriously until 1 million is left because it will interpret 10 million as an error your physical life is inconsistent with your growth it will alter it i want you to believe what business be that we have intelligent people here there are leaders here you know it's true it is the reason why people get angry and say i have been 10 years in this company they are not promoting me there is something your superior knows it is true that in terms of time oh, you have been there but they have weighed you they found out that this position of a director if they put you there your mindset your longevity of stay is valid you are due for promotion but it's not an attack if they give you a responsibility bigger than your mind because you have not yet valued integrity as a core value and it is dangerous to now put you in charge of finances are we together as a husband you ate your wife's money you ate your son's money that said see breakthrough you ate it as a father and yet you want to be director over finances no i don't care what kind of impartation you receive something within you will tell limitation this is the right state of this man and the realm of the spirit will respect it are we together yes sir My life changed when I realized this. I stopped wasting my time pursuing things. With all due respect as we prepare to wrap up, this is the tragedy of our social media generation. Now there's nothing wrong with it, except that it has become a healthy tool to sell falsehood. Did you hear what I said? A healthy tool to sell falsehood. That means I can propose a level to men that have not gotten to by growth and even force them to believe it. Now the problem is the moment they believe it, I am under pressure to defend it with the results and the results will keep running away from me because I, I only sold a lie. I had not gotten there by growth. So you stand in front of an aircraft and you take this thing you do and put it there and people say hallelujah glory to jesus they expect it to happen again because they assume you have grown to that level so somebody who knows you can send you a text and say please i used to know you before in primary school can you help us with one million naira and you say let me tell you the truth even two thousand i don't have what was listen what was that stage doing there you see the trouble you have created to yourself there are many battles that are unnecessary they don't have rewards falsehood created them what you see today in this ministry is a product of yesterday's mindset by the privilege of God's grace tomorrow will show the adjustment we have made in our thinking are we together it is impossible listen I think I used to tell the school of ministry students let's assume I like to use the fathers for an example Ladies and gentlemen, let's assume that Daddy Gio just walks in here and says, Brethren, I forgot my wallet and my car keys. What do you think is going to happen to him? The mindset he has through the sacrifice of grace does not allow the holder of that mindset to be without help. Are you getting the point now? So the moment he makes that announcement, 
you who did not give to your relative will carry 10 million and say, sir, I've been praying to give you. And he says, I don't need it. He said, no problem. Another person will go and buy a brand new car in Abuja with all this economic problem you are saying. There is a mindset that forbids him to be struggling. Did you get that now? It's the truth. It's the truth. I saw this with my life, with all due respect. I never told people, stop giving me five naira. Stop giving me two naira. All I needed to do was to grow to a point that giving me one naira becomes unfair. You don't have to tell people. Don't tell people to change their mind. Change your own value and grow. It will reflect in the way people perceive you. I tell you why some people will never come to your restaurant. There is something in that restaurant that fights their vision. They want to go forward. They want to be inspired. But because there are flies in your restaurant and the moment they are done eating, you want to maximize profit, you have only two workers in a restaurant as big as this place. And people come there, the tables are unkept, they are not clean, everything is careless and then you are charging them. Something in that restaurant is driving their level of transformation. So there is a certain class of people, as a man of God, with all due respect, I will tell you, there is a certain class of people that will never come to identify with your vision. You know why? When they see childishness, immaturity, you are wasting their time, no intelligence, the truths are not life applicable, there is no discipline. Nobody will carry his wife and children as a director, as a great person. Influence has a mindset. Influence is a language. That when you pay the price to rise to that level, you will command the attention of those who find it in you. This is how transformation leads to liberty. If I want Koinonia to grow higher than this, it starts by spiritual growth, then intellectual growth then greater growth. I have to dominate my mind with a mindset that attracts the level I'm looking for. Are we together now? If my thinking stops, koinonia stops to reflect my mindset. If I backslide in my thinking, mysteriously, you will not have the passion to come here again. It will not be that you hate me. Something about your appetite for growth is being fought by my lack of growth. Let me tell you the truth, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to become an exceptional leader, grow to a point where your transformation is so superior, it becomes unfair to be ignored. Unfair to be ignored. Doesn't matter what nation you go to, unfair to be ignored. Hallelujah. I was jokingly telling my school of ministry students that when I went to deliver my lecture in Harvard, something happened to my notes the morning that i was going to deliver the lecture my softwares were updating and this thing just scattered my notes like that i had like three or so hours and then a major part of my lecture notes had just disappeared i said what is this but you see if you know those days will come start preparing now how do you prepare by relating with global minds relating with global informations. This is your commitment to God and your destiny that I don't want to remain small. All that notes that I put in the lecture was prepared within three hours. You see, there are things you cannot fake. You can copy a note and read it and intelligent people will look at you and say, this is the last time you will come here because they know you are disconnected with that result. It did not come from you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you have allowed to keep you in one place, Whatever has come into partnership with Satan in your life, through your mind, in the name of Jesus, let it depart now and forever. <laughs> Sit down, let me wrap up. Greed is a mindset. It's not an attitude. It's a mindset. A mindset that has informed you that all you have is all there is. And if you bring out anything and give, whether to God, or his servant or anything it depletes you you interpret depletion as losses and so you don't give giving is a mindset the macedonians had it what is the mindset the mindset is built from scripture that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the first time you read that scripture it will wrestle the general idea to keep 
you have to keep planting that seed by hearing and repetition until it gains ascendance beyond every other information. How about laziness? Laziness is beyond an attitude. It is a mindset. A mindset. Diligence is a mindset. I told you that every time you open the Bible, see heaven proposing different mindsets for you. This is the kind of life I've prepared for you. I set before you blessing and cursing. A life of excellence or a life of mediocrity. Choose. So every time you wake up in the night and you are studying scripture, do you know what you are saying? Lord, I agree with the mindset of a victor. Or Lord, I agree with the mindset that kept those behind me or those who came before me limited. A man of God asked me a question and said, how do you prepare your sermons? Because sometimes we see you everywhere from pillar to post and yet on Sunday. I said, what of those who preach multiple times every week? There is a system for excellence and efficiency. If you don't know it, follow them who through faith and patience, instead of disgracing your destiny again, there's no need reinventing the wheel. There are people who have mastered the art of efficiency. Are we learning now? Some of you are here and you desire promotion. Let me tell you sincerely. I will speak over you. But I've taught you the value of the anointing is when it rests upon a transformed mind. The mind gives the capacity. Prophecy and the speakings of God now gives allowance for it to find expression. Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, excellence is a mindset. Insisting on standards is a mindset. Cutting corner is a mindset. I hope you know that. Bribery and corruption is a mindset. It's not an attitude, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. When God wants to help you, he opens up the way through salvation and he now begins to do the work of the mindset. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, transformation is warfare. Transformation is warfare. Because there are contents already in your mind releasing all kinds of energies and attracting to your life unpleasant situations. Listen, the things that God has brought to my life today were always there. But there was a version of me they were looking for. And the former version of me made it unfair for them to come. I hope you know when God called me you were there. You were still on earth. Why didn't you come? Because my level of transformation made it unfair for someone of your destiny to be under me at that point. It took transformation alongside the mercy of God. Now he has brought you. There are still others. If I remain here, they will not come. A day will come where Gentiles will come to your light and kings to the brightness. So if the light stops shining, only Gentiles will be there. But kings will not come. And so when we commit ourselves to excellence, when you keep praying as if you've not started, when you keep pressing as if you've not started, when you keep learning the laws again, let me tell you the truth. There is none of my messages that I don't listen to. It's a discipline. This message I'm preaching now, as I go back home between now and 3 a.m., I must listen to this message before I sleep. It's a discipline. If for any reason I skip it, there are disciplinary actions I met upon myself. You see that? Yes. If for any reason I sleep because I'm human and by morning I don't listen to this, I must listen to it at least two or three times. First for my personal edification and then two for improvement and correction. No week should be a worse version of me. Everything should be improvement. That is my commitment to keeping you. That is my partnership with God. When you want the nations to listen to you, you prepare like the person who is ready to speak to nations. You cannot prepare like one to speak to mediocres and want nations and kings to hear you, no matter what you have to say. Hallelujah. Some of you, the way you dress is the reason why kings cannot hear you. You dress like somebody who wants to steal from kings and they run away from you. Yes, sir. You don't dress like a king yourself. 
you remind them of the people that cause them pain and they run away from you if you're a businessman here let me challenge you go and have a meeting with your workers this week gather all of them and say I came to church and an orientation was given by the man of God let's steal out 30 minutes and have a meeting you dress well you clean this office go and get somebody's remove these paints that looks like this is a dilapidated structure paint boy it will take from my profit it's a mindset every time you feel limited just remember my message it's a mindset go and scrape that paint put something nice put a signboard so that people will know this is where you are train your staff when people come you greet them good afternoon sir is this so and so place yes sir can i see your boss don't say I, am i not a human being no it's a mindset i'm wrapping up but the church is a place of learning okay i appreciate you sir could you give me a minute let me just talk with him if i have the permission i'll let you know but in advance just for you to know that please if he's busy don't find offense you have represented that company well by the time the person calls, he will not be angry. He will say, there's one of your staff. Her name is XYZ. This lady did something to me that made me, you are a good man. And because of that, what I was coming to tell you, the business contract to work, one person brought increase. Do you think they will not promote that one person? There is a science to promotion. It's not just superstition. If I'm a CEO, there are people I will never promote. And I will make sure they know it. If they are not going to grow there's no sentiments anywhere if you're a man of God go and settle down do your homework in the name of Jesus settle down and do your homework if it's time to pray pray don't stand before God's people and you keep speaking and say be healed be blessed no testimonies nobody's coming no grace no fire let me tell you members love you but they love their destinies too they love their children too if they see indefinitely that there are no fruits of transformation there's no fruit of genuine encounter they will love you but they will quietly go and look for where they will find answers am I right on that we're going to pray let me give you two final thoughts write this down knowing the truth by the ministry of light makes you see and reveal the value of salvation knowing the truth by the ministry of light will make you see in your life and will make you reveal the true value of salvation that means the real value of salvation is displayed at the point of your transformation if you are not transformed you will cheapen salvation and make it look like Jesus did not really do anything spectacular the excellency the real value in salvation is revealed not just at the point of the new birth but at the point of transformation that is when you will see his power that is when you will see his wisdom that is when you will see his favor that is when you will see the influence that is when you will see the excellence final word for tonight the ultimate proof and please let me request you write this the ultimate proof of the presence and the power of light is not intelligence but liberty the ultimate proof of the presence of and power of light is not intelligence but liberty that means when all is said and done the proof that you have enjoyed the ministry of light is not just that you become more brilliant or more enlightened is the liberty that your life commands and the liberty that you bring to others on account of your light because in his light we see light in your light as his representative others too should see light are we together no matter what i say i know about healing no matter what i say i know about transformation no matter what i say i know about favor the end product of it is the liberty that attests to that knowledge if it cannot happen have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to jesus or you want to rededicate your life to jesus christ as your lord and savior then say this short prayer 
Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.